What's the word, y'all? I cannot believe he took the shot. I'm recording this right after the game ended. Uh, this is one of the videos that I wish I had time to film like tomorrow morning so I can watch the pressers of Curry, of Draymond, of Poole to hear what he was thinking in that moment of time. But my initial reaction is no way he took that shot. It's like nine to seven seconds left on the clock. And yeah, they throwing two bodies at Steph Curry. They said, hey, anybody but Steph. But there's so much time. There's timeouts. There's a lot of different options other than jacking up a... I don't even know how many feet ended up being. Let me see if the NBA got that tracked already. The NBA said it's a 27 footer. That don't feel right. I, that felt like a <laughs> that felt like a 30 footer minimum, but I don't know. Hey, no matter what happens to the Warriors uh, throughout this this run, whether they lose in this round or go to the NBA Finals, I want to show my appreciation for the amount of great games they have given us so far in the playoffs alone. And everybody been looking forward to the series since the moment that they beat the Kings. Everybody knew this series is going to be. Gonna be excited. I've seen a lot of people pick the Warriors to win. I've seen a lot of people pick the Lakers to win. And both have their reasons why you would think that they could come out on top. Game one, I really want to see how they guard Steph Curry. And initially, they, they put Jared Vanderbilt, Jared Vanderbilt on it. And actually, Jared Vanderbilt put together a really good defensive game on Steph Curry. And you could have saw this coming. Not that he was going to stop Steph Curry, because I don't even think he did that. But that he had the tools to be able to do this. Um, I'm specifically thinking about the game against uh, the... Mavericks early in the season that the game the Mavericks blew like a 24 and a 27 point lead to the Lakers. Jared Vanderbilt had the Luka Doncic assignment and, and made it hard. At the end of the day, when you have these top players like Luka or Steph Curry, your objective when you're guarding him is at least make it difficult. Because you're not going to stop him, but make it difficult. And I think that when Jared Vanderbilt was on the court, Steph Curry had a really tough time getting this stuff off. And then it was when they decided to go smaller and bring it in a shooter that he got a, you know his, his best looks. But even in that, in the last couple minutes of this game, Dennis Schroeder played amazing deny defense on Steph Curry. That he was hugging that man the entirety of the last two minutes, trying to prevent him from even touching the ball. But you did have the one play where Steph Curry freed himself up for like a millisecond. And these are one of the reasons why we love Steph Curry so much. And it was on the right wing. A millisecond of time. And he got it up and he made the three. Another one of the impossible shots that Steph Curry makes or takes and makes. And the Lakers almost blew this one, right? The, the Warriors put together a nice little run. And I would say Jordan Poole was having a good game until the shot. He made like two shots in his game where he was fishing for like a, a four-point play or, you know, getting fouled on the three with the ball ended up going in, but he didn't get the whistle. I do believe that there was one shot with like, I don't know, 60 seconds to go where Jordan Poole got to the basket. I thought maybe he got fouled and they didn't call it. I guess we'll see in the last two-minute report. But I also came into this game very interested to see what Darvin Ham and the Lakers draw up as far as defensively when it came to the Draymond Green, Steph Curry pick and roll. And in a lot of cases, Anthony Davis stayed home to prevent cuts and to the basket and all that stuff. And that was surprising to me. Um, they did it way more when it was Poole rather than Curry. And that's when Poole made him, you know, made him pay a little bit. There's one play early in either the second quarter where I think Steph Curry went on a nice 8-0 run by himself where Anthony Davis was like attached to the basket on a pick and roll and Steph Curry's like, oh, Steph, I ain't been this open in six years. And he takes the three and he makes it. And then the very next play, they try to do the same thing. And this time, Anthony Davis like hedged the screen and stuff. So they were adjusting on the fly. I honestly think that that one play, Anthony Davis might have forgot what the hell he was doing and it gave up an open three. Speaking of Anthony Davis... This is what you need. If you want the Lakers or you're assuming that the Lakers are going to win, these are the type of performances you need from Anthony Davis. 30 points, 23 rebounds, and again, another dominant defensive effort. Throughout the course of the playoffs, he has been as dominant as I've seen on the defensive side of the ball for him in a minute. You know what I'm saying? He's always been a really good defender. Um, one of those dudes that when he was... Young in his career, you like, oh, that dude's going to win a DPOY eventually. He ain't got one yet, but the way he's playing right now, if he carries this over to the next season, I don't see how he doesn't win a DPOY unless, of course, games played is always a thing for Anthony Davis, but he was defensive, uh, defensively on top of everything. There is no there is no baskets in my paint, and he lived up to that. He did the same thing in the last series, and if he continues to carry this on, I mean, the defense of the Lakers is going to be elite. He is a one-man defensive anchor, and he's doing a great job there. And he also gave you 30 points. Me and the guys were talking about um, how this is like the best Anthony Davis we've seen in a minute. And, of course, of, other than the run that he had 
earlier in the season before he got injured where he had a 40-piece, a 40-piece, a 40-piece. I think he even had, did he have a 50 in there? Either way, he had like a two-week stretch where he was on top of the world offensively and defensively. Then he got injured, eased his way back into it. But as far as like the stakes of it being the playoffs, this is as good as he has looked since 2020, the first year he got to LA. And, and this is the version, because this is not a good LeBron James uh, game, but this is the version of Anthony Davis you need if you're thinking about the next chapter of the Lakers. Because at LeBron James' age, I, we cannot expect him to be prime LeBron where he can single-handedly win a basketball game anymore. I'm sure I'm sure there's some left there, but I'm not going to ever count LeBron out until he completely shows me that we should. But, like, you want the torch to be handed to Anthony for him to showcase why you gave up Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, uh, what Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, Lonzo Ball, a thousand first-round picks and some swaps. He, he needs to showcase why you did that, and we're, we're seeing it at the forefront. Like, that was early in last season where in the in the before the season even started, they were doing these interviews and stuff. And Anthony Davis was saying, or LeBron was saying that this is Anthony Davis's team. And then last year, it was it was not that. It was objectively a bad season for Anthony Davis' standards. And this year, he got rid of all of that, and he's better than he's been in a in a minute. It was just a one play. It was early. It might have been in the second quarter. I want to say. Where Kevon Looney had three offensive boards by himself and Anthony Davis was just standing around. And then since that moment, he was like, you know what? I can't do it. We just saw how Kevon Looney in the third quarter against the Sacramento Kings kept them in the game and eventually helped them win. We cannot allow uh, Kevon Looney to kill a glass. I mean, Kevon Looney still ended up with 23 rebounds in itself. But it was a lot more muted, I would say, in comparison to the Sacramento Kings uh, series. Because he ended up with seven offensive boards and I think three or four of them happened on one play alone. So, you know what I'm saying? So, like, even though it, it looks like seven more shot attempts, technically it was, but it was him missing his own. You get what I'm saying? I cannot believe still that that man took that shot. With all the momentum that you had, and not listen, I, under, I understand psychologically, he was on one, at least part of this game. He was open. I, I, I need to see the post game. I need to see the post game even for everybody involved, not just the players. I need to see what coach is saying. I need to see what the Lakers even saying, because they might get asked about it for sure. But I cannot believe that he took that shot considering the stakes. And I ain't rewatched it. I ain't got to look. Usually when something like this happens, when somebody takes a bonehead shot, I, I usually try to look at the other four players on the team and see what their reaction was. I didn't even look to see. I see a lot of people already on Twitter, Twitter talking about the Denzel Valentine shot that Denzel Valentine took against the Heat, I want to say, when the Bulls were making a big old comeback and he just came up court and jacked up a three to air ball. Uh, similar, different stakes for sure because the Bulls were going to be bad regardless. Uh, this is a game one that you could have won after that great run. And now you're in a hole. You know, the home court advantage is no longer there. And again, Chase had been a place that a lot of people couldn't come into and win. You know what I'm saying? So just like game two for the Knicks was a crucial must win game. And they ended up doing their part of the deal. Game two is that for the Warriors. You do not typically lose home court advantage 0-2 and then come back to win the series. I know it has happened, at least recently. Um, but it, it's very, very rare. And they, they got them. They got them up. 53 shot at us. 53 three-point attempts tonight. 53. And they lost. They hit 21 threes. The Lakers hit six. They lost this game. And a lot of that has to do with the free throw dispar the disparity. But this is not me saying that the, the referee was bad. Of course, the refs are going to miss calls. Again, I just mentioned one on, uh, on Jordan Poole in the paint. There was a few that, of course, were just like any other uh, refereeing staff, you're going to see it. F calls missed or phantom calls. It's just part of the game. We all can accept that. But the re the the free throw thing is not just, oh, snap, they want the Lakers to win because the Lakers have done this all season long. I don't know if y'all remember at the last week of the season, this was going around on Twitter um, where, not on Twitter, but just in general, where they shoot uh, a lot more threes than anybody, not threes, free throws than anybody else in basketball. But that is that is by design. They, they've been a team that offensive rebounds like crazy, and they get to the basket, and that's where fouls are called. The Warriors are not a team that gets to the basket often, and because of that, they don't shoot a lot of free throws. And today, I, I saw a lot of that. The same thing we saw in the regular season, the same thing we saw in both of their series, uh, the last series. This is The Lakers are a team that gets to the basket, gets a lot of foul calls, and the Warriors don't do that. And it's a lot harder to do that now, considering Anthony Davis has got the, that painted area on absolute lock. And for as aggressive Anthony Davis can be, on the defensive side of the ball, he he doesn't foul often. I, I feel like Anthony Davis is not in, in 
as much foul trouble as you would think somebody of his defensive caliber can be. So that's just a testament to something he could do. There's one play with the Warriors on a fast break, and Anthony Davis blocked the shot without even looking at the defense. Like, that's the type of stuff he was doing today, you know? Um, so, yeah, them being able to draw the fouls and hit their free throws helped a lot today. You know what I'm still waiting for, though? I'm still waiting for, in this playoff run, to have that one LeBron game. You know, um, so he had another LeBron. I, I'm again only compared him to himself. A LeBron sneaker, 22 points, 37 percent for field, one for eight from three. Um, he had a clutch one down the stretch, the mid-range jump shot when the bleeding was maybe a little bit too much. So he he, he came through there. But I want to see like a 35 point game where LeBron is doing this. You know, he giving himself the crown, and it ain't happened just yet. And I'm sure it's going to happen eventually. It's kind of a demoralizing loss if you're the Warriors. Because, again, the Warriors didn't play a bad game. Um, sometimes the stuff just happens. I don't know. Again, my initial reaction to all of this. I cannot wait to watch these interviews in a couple minutes. Um, let me know what you think. 1-0 series, does it sway your idea of who was going to win based on that one game? Uh, we do have Steve Kerr who will make some type of adjustments. And I'm excited to see what those could look like for game two. And, yeah, I'll see, I'll see y'all tomorrow.